Welcome everyone. I am Chris Gore from Film Thread. I am very much pre-coffee as I talk to you here on a Friday morning. Alan Ng is in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. And I'm very jealous. He's going to have some uh, very good barbecue at the Alamo Draft House where he will be seated and closed for the next four or five days. We're going to find out. We're going to get a report from Alan. He's in his lovely hotel room with his free continental breakfast. I hope you're doing well on a Friday morning today on the show. We're talking about Scream 6, also the Adam Driver science fiction film 65, plus a preview of movies playing at South by Southwest. Uh, also, the director of Righteous Thieves will be joining us at the end of the show today. A big show, a big show, and I'm very excited. I hear that Aiden and AJ are listening as we speak. They bought me beers and... Uh, uh, beers and drinks at uh, this this sushi place. Dollar beers. Let's get things started on a Friday. Let's let's get things going. Grab your coffee. I am so pre coffee right now. We got to get things going here. I'm serious. <laughs> hey, Alan. How's it going, man? Hey, how's the, how's the hotel room? The hotel room is really nice. It's a it's a nice large suite. I, they gave me a desk, like an office desk, so that's what I'm on right now. Uh, yeah, I got a full on kitchen. Yeah, no, let's let's give us the tour, Alan. Yeah. Alan, give yeah. us the tour. Full on kitchen, like like giant TV with uh, Netflix. Yeah. Wow, you can watch all Bedrooms the rooms in the back. Yeah, we have a separate bedroom. Yes, Look at it's that. also a suite as well, but. Uh, Oh my God! Well, uh, look, just the the hotel parties. You're gonna have to be careful. The hotel room party. You don't want to be too loud. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be too loud, for yeah. sure. The continental breakfast, eh, you know, not so great, right? What is it? Yogurt? Not so good. Is no, it yogurt it, and it's, coffee? It, no, they've actually got like uh, bagels, eggs. Uh, I just grabbed a giant pile of sausage, which uh, a little dry. <laughs> you know, uh, you, but know what I, uh, you know what yeah. I'm enjoying right now? I'm I'm enjoying no sausage. Your sausage, yours is a dry sausage. The <laughs> sausage is dry. Alan's sausage is dry. It's dry. It just is. I feel. I feel like someone's going to make a video out of this. <laughs> it's the Alan's. Uh, wait, what is the describe the describe the sausage again? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't go back. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going back. We're going no, back. No, dry. No, Alan. no, you actually have to go back. Look, grab the actual clip. Yeah. I hear there's a short film playing at South by Southwest called Alan's Dry Sausage. All right. <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, let's see who's in the chat before we start uh, talking movies uh, today. Really old movie says, sup, everyone. Zavin is here. Hi, everybody. David Glenn. Howdy, everyone. Lord Thoth. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Join us as a member. I will say this. If you are a member for this Sunday's Oscars watch party, we are giving away, we're giving away five Blu-rays. We're giving away um, like 20 codes to the Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, every hour on the hour, we're going to drop a bunch of codes on our community tab only for members. So you have to be watching live during our Oscars watch party to be the first to get a chance to get those codes. Uh, Darth Dad Bod 88 says, I feel a disturbance in the forest. Yeah. Ironically, there's a movie at South by called A Disturbance in the Forest. I know, I know the filmmaker behind that movie. Oh, it, do you? It's a filmmaker. His name is Jeremy Kuhn. He is the producer and editor. I've been friends with Jeremy for years. Um, he's the producer editor of a movie, Napoleon of the movie Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, he produced it and edited it. And he produced it because he wanted to be an editor and no one would give him editing jobs. So he's like, well, I'm just going to make a movie and I'll just be the editor. This is, this is how you fulfill your dream folks of being an indie filmmaker. If you want to do it, hire yourself. Don't sit here and kowtow to the corporations that want to make garb, want to feed us garbage. Uh, just make your own movie, make your own damn movie as Lloyd Kaufman would say 
Solomon Thornton, always good to see you. Uh, Patrick Lemire, paint your hotel room pink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Alan, come on. Why is it your hotel room looks so dry? You know what it is? It's the same color as I am. It's beige. It's beige. That's what I'm going to do. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> It's so funny. You see, like white people get so much hate on on uh, the internet. And nobody cares, and it's like, all right, I'm just going to refer to myself as a beige person from now on. That's yeah, that'll go over well. Yeah, it's going to go over great. It's going to go over great. Uh, before we, um, oh wait, we have a super chat here from Adam Iglesias. Thank you for that. Uh, hi, Chris and Alan. I got tickets to see Return of the King extended edition in theaters in April with my dad. I've never seen Lord of the Rings in the theater. Oh my God. First of all, you're seeing it with your dad. That's going to be already an amazing experience. Secondly, I envy you. I wish I could see it for the first time again in the mm -hmm. theaters. I will say I am a big, maybe a controversial take. I like the second movie the best. I know the first one is great as like the setup. You learn about the characters. The second, Two Towers is epic. Two Towers is insanely epic. And Return of the King, uh, I, I just it, I won Best Picture, right? One Best Picture. Yes, it did. I, I I'm pretty sure the Oscars just basically waited to the last movie to come out before giving it the Academy Awards. I mean, do they should they should come up with some Oscar special recognition Oscar for a trilogy? It's mm -hmm. hard to pull off, and this is what's interesting about the Lord of the Rings films is people hardly complain about them. And by that I mean we're not talking. You know how like we're still talking about the Star Wars sequels. Mm -hmm. How bad they were! It's been like three, it's been almost four years since they did this trilogy was completed, the Star Wars sequel trilogy, and and everyone just kind of agrees, like, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, you don't hear people talking about the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson trilogy because it's so, it's just so perfect. A uh, Shuxi. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, just to back that up, uh, yeah. you know, none of the Tolkien fans ever trashed the movie, even though it did liberties with the storyline was Tom Bombadil. I guess some people are butthurt that he never showed up, but for the most part, you know, the, even the Tolkien fans uh, love the, love the trilogy. Now look at this people in the chat. It's person of beige, Chris, uh, <laughs> make Marvel beige again, says David Glenn. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh wait, Dave T geek says, just don't tweet, make Marvel beige again. Just saying, yeah, I won't be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. This is funny. Brad Young says I'm darker than Alan and still considered white. <laughs> yeah, I know. Range. Wait, what are you drinking? Kombucha. What? Something healthy. Yeah. Something that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my stomach prepared for all this barbecue. Well, uh, by the way, Alan, um, Alan is going to be uh, at South by all weekend. I think he's you're coming back on Tuesday. Yes. Uh, so, Alan, can you give us? Let, let's let's let me just let me. I'm gonna. It's a, it's gonna be a quick pivot here. Let's. Uh, can you give us a preview of South by Southwest? Just like what you're. I mean, you are going to be doing little updates, video updates for members only on our community tab. But Alan, can you tell us what can people expect out of your coverage from South by Southwest? Give us a preview. We just learned, we just learned that John Wick 4 is the secret screening at South by Southwest. That means that Keanu Reeves will be in Austin, Texas. I'll bet, you know what I'll bet? I'll bet Keanu Reeves is going to do Joe Rogan. Hmm. It's just a theory. That would be pretty cool. It's just a theory. I, I think that's a big theory. I, I doubt he'll do it. Okay, so Alan, tell us what movies are on your schedule. What yeah. are you going to see? And then next Wednesday, next Wednesday, you and Sabina Duplassi are going to be here, and we're going to we're going to do this. Will be like the second half of the show. We're going to talk about movies that you saw at South by Southwest yeah. on Wednesday after you get back. This... But tell us what's on your schedule. What movies are you seeing? Yeah. What, are you, what are you most looking forward to? Yeah, I, I wish I was better prepared for this, but I'll just go through it. But um, yeah, the, technically South by Southwest starts tonight. So uh, the the big one I'm looking forward to tonight is uh, Late Night with the Devil. This is the David Dasmalchen, uh horror film. And uh, cool. yeah, so yeah, it's about what syndicated talk show host has been long trusted companion of Insomniacs. Uh, but after a tragic death of Jack's wife, plans a special Halloween special on the show. Cool. Uh, 
And then before that, I'm planning on seeing. Sorry, you're just. Is, we're actually looking at your schedule right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other one I'm looking forward to tonight is if I can late bloomers. And this is uh, Karen Gillen's uh, oh, upcoming sweet. upcoming movie here. Uh, then tomorrow, I actually got my tickets for tomorrow. Um, like I said, I wish I was a whole lot more prepared for it than this. How can you not uh, be prepared? You've been planning to go to South by since. At, look, I know. Just to everyone in the chat, Alan's been bugging me. So we go into South by. We go into <laughs> South by. Okay, fine, we'll go. And then we had a discussion before, and it's just like, uh, I wish we could afford to go to more festivals, but the, we get access to a lot of these things on video, anyways. Mm -hmm. So I always question like why are we going i just believe and this is coming from a guy that i wrote four editions of a book on film festivals i don't know if film festivals are as important anymore as they used to be for filmmakers because there are so many ways for filmmakers to reach an audience <coughs> the point of the point of a film festival is you want to find an audience for a movie that might be challenging and that mm -hmm. i get but uh I, I, just, I don't think the, the big studios are supporting film festivals anymore, uh, except for the big ones like Sundance, which they were barely at. Um, you know, right. I think Toronto, Toronto and Cannes is probably the big, uh, the big festivals. Um, but you know, even then they're, they're pulling back on, on everything. Well, because those, budgets. those film festivals are backdoor markets. That's what they mm -hmm. are. If you have not sold your movie to a distributor, you go to a film festival to sell your movie to a distributor. But a lot of times what you discover is that it's like a, it's like a wrestling match. You know, the outcome is determined before the match takes place. Like they've already sold their movie to a distributor. They wait mm -hmm. and then they go to a film festival and then it's announced at the film festival. That's when the announcement that is, is, is at the film festival and it gets a lot of press because of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's a, here, another one, another body. It's about this girl who, uh, it, basically someone took her face and made deep fake porns with her face on it. And this is, this is her story. Topical. Oh wait. So this is a true, it's like a short, it's a true story. It's a, this is, no, this is a feature documentary, feature documentary. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I'm just interested in the subject matter here. Um, wait, wait a second. Yeah. Can you repeat that? Wait. So this, the movie is about <laughs> porn. No, no, look, look, like, if you can't, if you can't piece together a good clip from, from what I've said before, then you've just missed your opportunity. That's all. So you're going to put me, you're going to put me full screen now. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, no, you're not gonna get it. But yeah, we're gonna we're watching this documentary. Oh my god. All right. Well, I, I okay. So <laughs> next Wednesday, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about. Also, it. Also, by the way, you are cover on filmthreat.com. You can get all these reviews as they are coming out. Yes. Yeah. So and and you're not the only one. It's also Sabina. There are other writers that are working remotely. Mm -hmm. We'll have all your South by Southwest coverage, and from Alan's hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, I'm halfway tempted to see Black Barbie, a documentary. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that looks interesting. It no. does look interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I did see, uh, I got an early screening of You Can Call Me Bill, which is the Bill Shatner documentary. Oh, so and, you've um, seen it? I've seen it, yeah. In oh, fact, uh, tell us about in it. fact Mr., Mr. Shatner was there when, when I saw it. Look, I, I have to say, the, the guy is 91 years old, and... Um, and you could, you would never tell. I mean, you like Patrick Stewart's getting old, um, but Bill Shatner has so much more energy. I mean, you could literally. I don't know why he could he could do a Kirk miniseries. Um, he's he's just he he's moving around. He's got a little pep to his step. Uh, he's he's cognitive as hell, um, and uh, so you know I don't know I don't know why. I mean, we kind of know why uh, the the Star Trek higher ups, the the echelon at uh, Paramount, have kind of uh, shunned Bill Shatner. But uh, look, this is this is a documentary that is done through uh, Phantom Fandom M or whatever. Uh, and and it, no, no, I can't no. really it's, go. It's uh, the name of the company is Legion M. Legion M. That's it. Legion M. And uh, 
I can't give a full review on it, so I'll give you a, just a reaction. But it's essentially, it's not a traditional documentary. It's basically um, William Shatner uh, philosophizing and being poetic about life, about his career. And, he, and it's intercut with a lot of uh, not only Star Trek clips, um, but a lot of his other work. And uh, it's, you know, the, the, it's a lot like Shatner's world, if, if you've seen that one where he's just, it's just him philosophizing about life. And um, weirdly enough, there's a, I, I just saw a headline today that, that basically said William Shatner has, doesn't have long to live. Um, it's kind of a, a misnomer. He, he doesn't have a disease or anything. He's 91 and he's kind of recognizing his mortality. And, uh, and so that's kind of what this documentary is about. So it, it's mostly him talking uh, and philosophizing and, uh, you know, there's some clips of him doing his uh, his poetry in front of a symphony. Well, I mean, the the thing is, is um, I, I uh, a movie that I think is very good, directed by um, Robert Meyer Burnett. Very excellent. Like it was sort of like predicting the popularity of nerd culture, free enterprise, and Bill Shatner is uh, at the center of that movie. I think Paramount missed a huge opportunity mm -hmm. by not having. Uh, William Shatner in the reboot of Star Trek. What a huge, huge missed opportunity. Uh, they brought in Leonard Nimoy. They should have brought in Shatner as well. There would be no Star Trek without William Shatner. There would be no Star Trek without him. Go back and watch the original series. The, the way that he delivered those Shakespearean monologues about who we are as, as a people, what, what is the meaning of humanity and what is our mission and place in the galaxy? He put, he put, he, he expressed those passions so eloquently. I, I, there's no Star Trek without, without William Shatner and the, the, the trio of Kirk, Spock, McCoy, it hasn't, it hasn't been done better. Right. I mean, you could compare it to Han, Luke and Leia, but my God. Uh, yeah. This, this image, we talked about this. This is, um, this is disgusting. Yeah. That an entire universe to explore. They got two of your cartoon characters in this tribute. Um, oh wait, William Shatner actually retweeted it. Yes. No, look, what did he say? So, so, so it, uh, let's see. Oh, so Trek News says new Paramount Plus Star Trek graphic omits William Shatner's Captain Kirk. William Shatner replies, and that surprises you? It's it's disgusting to me how he's been treated. He yeah. he literally, none of these people working on Star Trek now, none of the voice actors who do the, the cartoon series, no one working on any of these shows would have jobs if it were not for the mm -hmm. popularity of the original Star Trek series. Yeah. And, and to leave him off, yeah. And to the Star Trek movies, to leave him off is disgusting. Fans have noticed, and this is what they think of you. They have done everything to diminish William Shatner. I, I'm, I'm, it's so, it's yeah. so annoying. It's so annoying to me because it's so obvious and right in front of all of our faces. It's just, um, Ah! A freaking IKEA chair. It's look, this is a belated gore rant here because this thing pisses me off. It 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 um and it's not just because I'm pre-pre-coffee. I'm I'm just gonna say that, but it's it's uh the, the fact that William Shatner has been so disrespected, um uh, I, I don't understand. This is this is the problem with this industry too, is ego. Mm -hmm. Ego ego's getting bruised. We're even hearing uh, we're hearing uh, rumors that Brie Larson as uh, uh, there have been Definitely. there's been behind the scene drama at the Marvels, right? This movie mm -hmm. that has been delayed now a fifth time, but this this was a no brainer. I, I don't see how you, I mean, it's, it's again, uh, constant, constantly looking for opportunities to emasculate male characters and uh, not having Shatner on this. It's, they just, they ju just want to erase him from Star Trek and it's sickening. I'll bet there'll be some way that they erase uh, Shatner from the new Star Trek. 
uh, from Kirk, that is, the character. I don't know. What yeah. are your thoughts? Well, I mean, Chris, Chris Pine isn't even on here. No. It, it, yeah, I mean, exactly. Not even Chris Pine. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, not that you want him on there, but I mean, you, you've said it. it. It boils it down. How, how do you not have the first captain on here? You know, uh, you know, the, and, and what, okay. So, so he has a slight ego, but doesn't he deserve it? I mean, it, it's, it, it, is the guy that much of a monster? I, I don't, I've never, I don't think you'd ever describe William Shatner as a monster. Uh, this is, this is, I'll, I'll tell you where the, the, where it comes from. It comes from the narcissist, not nar, make sure you clip that it comes <laughs> from the narcissism of the people working at lower levels that mm -hmm. that think they're that uh, they know better yeah and shatner was someone who if you if you read about you know the the behind the scenes making of uh star trek uh and whatnot he pushed back on things he cared about this character leonard nimoy cared deeply about the <sighs> character he created with spock Every time I hear that noise of you opening the kombucha. No, oh, sorry. This is very wow, this is very sensitive. It's loud. It shows up on the mic. Anyways, oh. I, I'm just I'm just saying that these narcissistic lower level people in the industry that are coming in who look at someone like William Shatner and think of him in a in a dismissive way. It, it's 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 horrifying. You should be I mean, you should be revering this person. You should find a way to work with him. And the fact that they're making a Picard series, they have an opportunity to do a Kirk series. Where's my Kirk series? Where is it? Where is yeah. my Kirk series? Yeah, if, if you met Shatner at that at the screening that I did, you'd swear they could make the guy could easily do a series. Sure, he may not be able to run around and do roles and stuff like that, but I don't know about that. In terms I mean, of his faculties, in terms of his faculties, he's spot on. He's you would never know he was 91 years old. As much as I'm loving Picard, there are moments in the show where I look at like, ooh, Patrick Stewart seems like a little like he's struggling. He yeah. seems old. I don't get that sense from uh Shatner. And Shatner, no, dude, the guy went into real outer space. He oh went yeah, that's that's in the doc. That is in the doc. In a penis-shaped spaceship, which is very, <laughs> very appropriate. He's a look, and and let's let's uh, let's be honest. The the reason that they don't like Shatner as Kirk or the character of Kirk, because he's a pimp in the galaxy. He's a galactic pimp, slaying women all across the stars. <laughs> uh, let's look at let let's look at your comments here on this uh and we'll move on up oh yeah for two says must terry black's barbecue 1003 barton springs road okay. all right alan i will i will note that down thanks for the tip i hope they have tri-tip imperfect shatner the man the myth the legend jtp rx he was the og captain of star trek yeah and imperfect it's, it's, they canceled him they canceled him and he didn't even do anything yeah Imperfect says Shatner has more energy than Stewart. That's true. Yeah. In fact, um, I did record the his opening statement uh, at my screening, and I will post that in the member the, the member uh, tab. Post it post for it, members. Just post it. Uh, how long? Post it live. Is, how long is? It? Oh, it's like three minutes. Just post it as a video. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that on the channel. We'll do some more stuff for members, folks, uh, okay. and then. Fat Elvis says Denny Crane. Why is that comment is highlighted? Denny Crane. Denny, Denny Crane. Crane. Have you from the practice? Not the practice. Uh oh, what was the other? The, the sequel to practice. No, he was great as uh I, I didn't I never watched that show. You never watched that? Oh my god. He's I so never good watched it. So that so the reference is lost on me. Okay, it's Sorry, lost folks. On you. I like my captains sitting in captain chairs, <laughs> not behind a, a lawyer's desk. Boston or, legal. And, that was it. Boston legal. Exactly. So uh, William, wait, there's a comment here. William Joseph Dunn says Franklin barbecue lives up to the hype. Do it. Alan Franklin dream Barber. profit for yeah. buck 99 says Shatner was on Bill Maher's podcast. Smart as a whip. Yep. So there you go. Well, thank you for that. Um, and, uh, 
Jericho Leon says, is the Oscar party watch Oscars watch party this Sunday for members only? No, it's our regular show. We're doing giveaways to members because we appreciate them. But no, the Oscars watch party. I mean, we've got the link is live right now. You should click the bell for notifications. So our Oscars watch party is going to be great. Do you know why? Because Alan's going to be there. Come here. I'm going to eat you. Get in my belly. <laughs> yeah. No, Alan will be there. Alan, come out to play. Alan, come out to play. I'm glad you're enjoying this. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, let's pivot for a second. I got a movie I want to talk about. A movie that's out in theaters. Alan, if you could help me on the comments here. Yes. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about Adam Driver in 65. 65 is a science fiction movie starring Adam Driver as a character. His name is Mills. He comes from a faraway planet in a faraway galaxy. He has a beloved daughter who is afflicted with a disease. And he and his wife are concerned for her future. And Adam has to go off on another mission. He's traveling across the galaxy with a cargo of people in cryogenic stasis to relocate them to another part of the galaxy. Not a lot of whole, not a lot of details on exactly why they're doing this. They're just going on some spacefaring trip, and Adam is your driver of the spaceship, so to speak. Uh, the the as the starship is is reaching its destination, it goes through an asteroid field that damages the starship, crash landing it on a planet. Filled with dinosaurs. And you know all this because why? Because you've seen the trailer. It's then up to Adam to uh, take the one surviving member, a young girl who doesn't even speak the same language as he does. I guess on this planet, they, they speak a lot of different languages, kind of like Earth. And they traverse across dangerous terrain, avoiding dinosaurs, pterodactyls, T-Rexes, uh, all, all, all sorts of, of dangerous wildlife, giant insects, in order to reach a piece of the ship that is still intact, that has a shuttle, that, an escape shuttle, so they can rendezvous and be rescued. That is the story of this movie. Now, it is uh, written by the two writers from uh, A Quiet Place, who I've actually interviewed on this channel. Uh, if you go to some of our older podcasts or um, just look up, you know, this, uh, I interviewed those guys right before I think A Quiet Place came, A Quiet Place uh, Part 2 came out. I interviewed these guys. So, um, yeah, no, it was, uh, no, it was when they, they uh, had a movie. It was a different movie. That they did. In any case, I happen to interview the screenwriters. Uh, but I have to say, uh, this film was a disappointment. And I'll tell you why. There's a fatal flaw with this film. And that is, there are only two characters. So, if one of the characters dies, or both of the characters dies, there is no movie. So, therefore... There are no stakes. And you see them put in all these dangerous situations. There's a bunch of pterodactyls that are after them. Then there are a bunch of these like smaller little tiny T-Rex dinosaurs that are actually very dangerous, right? That, that, that sort of swarm and kill. There are just everything about this planet. Something is out to kill you. And because there are only two lead characters you know they're not going to die or kill either of these characters because if they did, the movie would have no reason to continue. What should have happened is there should have been a group of people. So, you know, maybe half of the people in cryogenic freeze were wiped out, but then a bunch survived and they came out of freeze. They've now got to like, you know, 15 or 20 of these people now got to get to the shuttle 
and you're losing them, right? They're they're sitting around a campfire. There's some ambush. A bunch of dinosaurs kill off half the people. There's someone who's uh, selfish, only wants to save themselves. You know, these are all cliches, but it would have made it more interesting. You could have introduced a bunch of likable characters that all meet terrible ends. And it didn't do that. Uh, it felt like this movie felt like a kind of like a sci-fi channel movie with um, uh, better actors and a bigger budget, but that wasn't enough to save it. I think the audience that saw it was just sort of like, eh. uh, I, I, I love Adam Driver. I, I really think he's an exceptional actor. Um, and he basically, he's the only one you understand in the whole movie because he speaks English. The girl, she's kind of learning English as he goes, but like she speaks this foreign alien language. You, he gets these transmissions from his home world, which isn't Earth. But the, here's the dumb thing. And I talked to a friend of mine at our movie meetup group, um, Tyler, who said he saw this movie two years ago when it was at a test screening over two years ago. He saw this movie. So it's been sitting on a shelf for a while, unfinished, right? But the, the problem is, is that the main premise that that as the action begins, there are only two characters. Well, of course they're going to survive. Why would they not survive? It's so it, it really like it, it, it again, it should have introduced a group of people and that you learn to like and you know that you're going to lose a bunch of characters, a bunch of characters are going to be lost. So uh, I, I was just, it was just disappointing because of the potential. And the problem with this movie also is the title is effectively a spoiler. Because if you know anything about earth history, you know what happened 65 million years ago? Alan, tell me. Uh, the dinosaurs and all that stuff. <laughs> No, there's like, like the, oh the asteroid. The asteroid hits the there's planet. an extinction event. A giant yeah. asteroid hit Earth that uh, sort of created a, a a cataclysm that basically wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. And the 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 sort of ticking clock is that this asteroid is hurtling towards the planet. They've got to get to the ship to get on the shuttle to get out of there before the asteroid hits. I thought that what was going to happen was is that these people in cryogenic stasis were going to, you know, go into hiding and effectively there would have been a quote, Adam and Eve of the earth. You know, maybe you find out at the end that the little girl's name is Eve and his, 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 his middle name is Adam and they're Adam and Eve. Oh no, it's, <laughs> it's weird. Cause the movie starts and like, at, at, there's a point where it just says the title sort of comes like 10 minutes into the movie and it says 65 million years ago. I mean, they, they explicitly say they're basically going to earth. Right. Right. But I just felt like it had an opportunity to be clever. It wasn't, it had an opportunity to have real stakes and tension and it didn't have it. And I was, uh, honestly, I was disappointed. Uh, and, you know, look, there are moments of tension. I was entertained. But at the end, you're like, well, they're not going to kill off Adam Driver. You know? I mean, I guess maybe well, they could have and the little girl goes on. But it just didn't feel like this movie was ever going to do that. Because the girl is pretty, I mean, uh, she's, uh, uh, she's no Ellie from The Last of Us. You know? She's not as resourceful. Not a lot of swearing either. Not a lot of swearing. She's not as resourceful. She's not a girl boss, uh, you know. So, 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 you so what? What score would you give? Uh, Sixty five. Uh, I would give. <laughs> I didn't do that, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Alan did it to himself. <laughs> uh, no, I'd probably get it like a four or five out of ten. Yeah, probably. So, so honestly, this movie's about this crash landing. They they ch they get chased by dinosaurs and they have to get off the planet. That's basically the movie. Well, that's what's in the trailer, and that is the movie. If you've seen the trailer, you've uh, seen most of the movie. So, there you go. I just thought it would be more clever. Like, this is the history of our planet. We're gonna like we're gonna have to we're gonna we we can't leave this planet. We're gonna have to rebuild civilization here somehow. I thought it was gonna be like an Adam and Eve. Like this is where humans came from, right? And 
it doesn't even tease that it doesn't go there. And I thought, well, that I thought is there's somewhere where this is leading some sort of biblical nature. I mean, what's really interesting is how um, biblical stories used to be, used to be a big part of a lot of films. Look at the movie, you know, the Omen series, mm -hmm. even, even planet of the apes, the Lawgiver, and a reading like the sort of ape version of the Bible. And there is almost no spiritual or religious presence in any mainstream movies these days. And I think if they had leaned a little into that, not too hard, but just a little into sort of an Adam and Eve type situation and almost like, you know, <clears throat> we're going to start, we're going to document human civilization. You know, the, we're going to, we're going to defeat these, these creatures will not survive. We will find a way to survive on this, on this new world. We're going to tame this new world and nothing. It's just, we got to get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So I don't know. Um, yeah. We got some good comments here. Oh, let's go to the comments then. And so, so ultimately uh, I can't recommend it. Uh, if you see, though, okay. I have, I, there is something really good about this movie. Something really good about this movie. It's 90 minutes. <laughs> I love it. I love a 90 minute movie. Let's go to the comments here because I love to hear your comments. JTPRX, even the captain chair in the old Star Trek look better than the Ikea chair in Star Wars. Darth DadBod88, I saw this fun standalone movie. I mean, there were aspects, I'm not going to lie, there, there are some fun aspects to the film. Brent... Cheeson says Chris is describing pitch black. Exactly. So yeah. Uh Bear Down Adam says, I seeing 65 tonight. I hope it's just stupid fun. There are aspects of stupid fun. There are aspects of stupid fun. So defeater eater, this sounds awesome. Yeah. Now, does this relationship between the Am driver and the girl does that? Were you impressed with it at all or? No, it's fine. I mean, he relates to the girl because it reminds him of his daughter, his daughter, his daughter, his, dead daughter. Uh, his daughter who has like a terminal disease, a terminal disease, not dead, Alan. Okay. Um, but the reason he took this job, I'm going to like, okay, I'm going to do this job. It'll help us get money so that, you know, my daughter will live. So there you go. Uh, imperfect says, what's wrong? Enemy mine had only two characters. Chris is imperfect. Yeah, but it was, it was not about their survival. It was about them forming a friendship. They had to, they, they had an understanding. They learned about each other and each other's cultures, different, different stakes. They're different stakes. The stakes in enemy mine were that they had to, you know, learn about each other, right? They were, they were literally, enemies now face to face having to learn different stakes the stakes here were survival so different because of the stakes but I, look i can see why like my describing it actually sounds pretty good <laughs> oh my god uh, that happens Wamp a lot we, we describe movies better than they actually are <laughs> Wamp biscuit says were there slee stacks in this there are there is a moment in the movie that is totally right out of the land of the lost uh, it's because they see like sort of this cute dinosaur that's stuck in like quicksand and they save it. And, uh, and, and, uh, it's a cute dinosaur. So it's, it's, it just felt very land of the losty, right? Like, so there you go. Uh, I have respect for Adam driver, despite his involvement in the Disney Star Wars disaster. Yeah. So, uh, wait, did I read this one? Seeing hyped, uh, so hyped uh -huh. for a dinosaur movie that isn't Jurassic Park. My kingdom for a film. So, look, it is stupid, but I wanted there to be a deeper layer to it. You know, I mean, they focus on is the layer, I guess you could argue, is his relationship with his daughter and how that's sort of, he's emotionally working it out with this, with the young girl that he's saddled with 
and they have to find a way to survive and trek up a mountain 12 kilometers to get to the what remains of their starship but i feel like if they don't even speak the same language how how deep of a relationship can they build in this movie they, they they build one i mean that that part of the movie works but again i feel like there needed to be bigger stakes mm -hmm. um more characters so that way you could have actually you could have actually had other characters get you got to show like Hey, these things will eat you. These things will kill you. And, well, and also, also the big threat, this asteroid, it's it's a threat that's off screen. It's a threat. Well, that no, no, no. You, you eventually see it, like you know, right, right, right. But it's not like they're they're threatened. You know, you know, like uh, it, they're going to leave the planet at the last second. Well, they probably are, but um, but it's not like it's a real a real enemy, a real monster. Right. Right. No, but uh, and, and I thought the dinosaurs were well done. I thought the dinosaurs mm -hmm. were were well done. Um, and by well done, I don't mean they cooked them, but uh, <laughs> although they could, <laughs> yeah, it it I they could have yes if they had stayed longer. I, I just I I think it would have been more interesting if this led to the beginnings, the seeds of mm -hmm. human civilization on the planet. You know, it, it, it just yeah. it would have been more interesting if there were some biblical implications, because that was the thing that always made the omen so scary to me. The first, you know, the omen movies is that it's like, first of all, the music of those films is just haunting. And secondly, the fact that, oh, this stuff is really in the Bible. You know, this stuff is actually in the Bible, these uh, predictions of what's to come. And I and um, it's just funny because that is completely biblical and religious uh, themes are completely absent in modern cinema. I think it I think it says something mm -hmm. about what's happening, what's what's occurring, uh, you know, across society. Oops. No, put that up, film. And, uh, no, no. Oh, I'm up. sorry. Oh, I was trying to star something, and uh, I think it's interfering with. Put put it you, up. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me. There's a super chat that. I'm trying to start, but okay. Okay, Film Fast, it says, I was looking forward to something that looked basically original. Maybe this is why they don't do original anymore. It's possible. I mean, look, mm. I'm not going to try to dissuade you from seeing it. It's like, I can't recommend it. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I won't yuck your yum. It doesn't mean that you can't go see the movie and have a very good time. I'll say this. I did have some sake and a beer Thanks to uh, my buddy AJ and new friend Aiden. He's a new, he's a newcomer to our group. I'm not sure. We'll see how it works out. There needs to, I think there needs to be a ritual. There needs to be a new, you know, if you're joining the group, there needs to be a trials. There needs to be the trials. Um, but yeah. Uh, Eric, here's the super chat. Eric Stratton for 777, ref, refer, referring, uh, referencing the Shatner doc. Any reference to the role Lucille Bald played in producing slash supporting Star Trek during rough early times on TV? No, no. But a lot of it is about uh, his acting style and, and what he brought to the Kirk character because... You know, they play a lot of his very over dramatic performances uh, from from the original Star Trek. And he talks yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm well aware. Of, I think if they ever make a movie about that era, Lucille Ball should be a character. She was so integral. There would be mm -hmm. no Star Trek without Lucille Ball. They made an unprecedented two uh, pilots. They never do that in television. Mm -hmm. They don't do two. They produce a lot of stuff. Yeah. What's that? Oh yeah, they they did talk about him uh, coming on board after the original, uh, coming on board on the second pilot, which is basically the third episode of the original series. Yeah, right. He gets he gets into that. But if you if you want to know about the Lucille Ball and and her uh, and Desi Lou, basically uh, watch the the Lucy and Desi documentary on gotcha. Amazon Prime. And Patrick Lemire says, watch Boston Legal, Shatner and Spader. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. Uh, Winter, Winter Soldier says, I was the only person in the theater yesterday for 65. I was jealous of the empty seats. 
I mean, look, I know like Polly from Latino Slant was there and he hated this movie. I, I'll say I didn't hate it. Like, I don't feel like, and, and for those before you ask the question, there's nothing woke in this movie. Although there is, I just assume this is the default setting. Every couple is a mixed race couple. There are no same same ethnicity couples anymore in movies. I feel like that is just that will just never be the case. I hate to say it though, it's it's fairly representative. It's least, fairly representative the people I know. <laughs> no, but the point is, is that like it's so often it's like the default choice. Yeah. And it's just it, I think it's lazy. I think it's lazy. It doesn't it doesn't have to be every single time you're not saving the world or being progressive by doing that. But on uh I forgot the name of the home world that Adam Driver is from. His character's name is Mills. Uh, but he's in a you know mixed race relationship, and it's mm. like, of course he is. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it just it's happens so often you're surprised when it's not that way do, do you know what i'm saying alan like mm -hmm. it's sort of like yeah. uh, it's it's tired like anything you see too often in a movie or a tv commercial or whatever like it's it's so often and i think it's like that's not well yeah yeah i mean that exists of course but it's you know not 100 percent of the time <laughs> So I yeah I you know like I my my whole family it's all mixed race uh, you know we so it, it's it's kind of like I, I see it more often than I don't um, so I I'm less hung up on mixed race representation in movies uh, well, but I'm not, again I'm from I'm from LA and that's that's the thing we do out here we no, 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 we intermingle no, I'm not saying you know I, I'm not saying anything I'm, I'm just saying yeah I just it's so often. It's just now like expected. Mm -hmm. It's and it's like it's just it's overused. You know, it's like an over like any sort of like a thing like um like a scene in a movie where a bunch of characters are friends and they're eating Chinese food on the floor. Right? <laughs> like you don't see that as much in movies anymore, but there was a time where it's just like, oh geez, what are they doing? They're eating Chinese food out of boxes in on the floor. It's overused zavin very good comment here alan you're in california <laughs> california is not the world yeah well I'll, I'll say i've been in texas for a couple hours now and i've not seen any mixed race couples in, in texas well there you are it just the yeah. point is is that and this is the problem it's kind of the narcissism of uh people who live on the coasts they think that that's representative of everywhere and it's not the case it is absolutely 100 percent not the case at all zero it's 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 they're different i i feel like here's what here's what this is i will say this to all creatives who live on the east coast or the west coast go somewhere else go to texas go to florida go to atlanta georgia i love atlanta go somewhere outside of your comfort zone, go to Utah and not Park City. Go to Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, just just meet other people. I just think that I think it's important to be well-rounded and meet other people and see how um, just 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 meet other people. It's because there are cliches. There are, are cliches that um, you see of how people on the coast think of other people from other parts of the country. And uh, it's just as bad as the racism that they're accused, accusing other people of. They are prejudiced against people outside of the coasts. How about just get, get outside of LA? Go to Riverside. Go to the IE, the Inland Empire. Which I saw a report on the local news about the numbers of people leaving like California and New York. And they're all like leaving to go to other states. One of the one of the places people are leaving California, they're leaving like LA to go to where are they going? The Inland Empire. Because houses are <laughs> houses are almost affordable. You can get 
yeah. a home for a half million dollars that is not like a tiny hole in the wall. Yeah, I mean that's happening even in Northern California. The the more you move into there's there's a Pittsburgh, California, that is becoming a a developing area. Yeah, has been uh, for a couple of years. More comments here. Yeah, it's okay to laugh. Says there are great survival films that work with one slash two characters. Castaway, The Gray Arctic, uh, The Gray Arctic, etc. Why they work? It's character driven, not plot driven. Yeah, I feel sixty five is the latter. Yeah, it's it's plot driven the stuff with adam driver's very surface it's i miss my daughter mm -hmm. hope she's okay yeah and it's not it's not about it's survival on the planet it's about getting off the planet yeah and, uh, and then and i think that's a dynamic that you just uh, you know it just convolutes the story it, it it takes away from a better story i would say and that. of course she he sees his daughter in the young yeah. girl the young girl has lost her parents you know, they've each lost, they each have lost someone there. So they bond, but it's, uh, it's no Ellie and Joel. Let's just say that. By the way, if you said that this movie has been on the shelf for two years, that means this movie is a COVID shoot. And, I don't and that's know that probably... No, no, I don't know that it is. Is it 20? No, yeah. Well, if it was, on, if, if it was on the shelf on, in 2021, roughly 2020. Yeah, I guess, I don't know. This might have been pre-COVID. Yeah. Well, okay. Maybe. Or maybe. But I mean, the, to me, to me, know. I'm bringing it up just because that's that may be why there are only two characters in this movie. Right. Right. Uh, Grady Huckabee says it's surprising that this movie lacked tension and stakes, given that Quiet Place was filled with so much tension. Disappointing. Grady, it's part of our movie meetup group. He was at the screening yesterday. It, uh, yeah. John yeah. Thomas. Hey, by the way, I, I will be at the movie meetup group next week. What's that? I will be, I will be at the movie meetup group next week. What are you seeing? I'm seeing spinning gold. I think we talked about it. You, right, you, right. What you, time are you seeing, seeing it? It's, uh, it's at seven o'clock. Okay. So we are seeing next week Shazam at seven. Okay. So I will be seeing a different screening, but I will be there. You could actually, Alan, you could go, you could see a movie earlier. You could sh see Shazam earlier. Yeah, I may actually do that. But it would be great if you came to, uh, you know, dinner with all of us. Yeah. No, no, that's that's the plan. That's the plan. Okay, cool, cool. All right. And you'll have just returned from South by. Yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I right. know. Yeah. I think Don, I <laughs> the real get paid. I think Dante will be with us too because we're all going to okay. see Shazam. So, uh, John Thomas for five says Chris is talking about the Twilight Zone episode. Wait, is there a Twilight Zone episode that's similar to this? I'm sure there is. Yeah, probably not this elaborate and without dinosaurs. I don't know. What does the chat say? Which episode are you talking about? I have every episode of the Twilight Zone on um, digital. I bought it and then I found out that they're all on. One of the streaming services is it? Yeah, I is think it's it on Paramount. Paramount. I think it's on Paramount Plus, which I have. Um, and uh, yeah, it's on Paramount Plus. I have it, and then I bought it. Oh God, it was on special. <laughs> all the seasons of Twilight Zone. I'm like, yeah. great, I want to see them, and they look great. They're all in like H. They're like upresed. They look amazing. There must have been because those were all shot on film, but mm -hmm. most of them were shot on film. And uh, they look great. They look really good. Uh, John Thomas, please reply in the chat which episode. I'll watch the episode. So 65 is probably better than Scream. With Scream was really bad towards the end, says Airsoft. One, two, three. Scream is a W, says Justin Mar Star Wars Marvel Purist. Hmm. Uh, I'm just looking for fun action in a dinosaur movie. So does it have enough action is my only question, or is it just walking from one place to another? No, I, I would say that the action is well-balanced. I would say that. Like, it doesn't it doesn't rest long enough to have long conversations, you know? As soon as you think things are, things are, you know, they've settled in, whew, they can relax. Nope, not going to happen. So there you go. 
Uh, not the Batman says newer GPUs can do on the fly AI video upscaling. Now was watching some old silent movies with AI upscale on was pretty cool. But do you want that? Do you want to upscale old sci-fi movies? Yeah. I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, Brent Chesson says physical media is king. Nothing wrong with owning it. Yeah, because when the apocalypse comes and the internet is gone, you'll at least have those discs. Or you'll have it without trigger warnings at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Or without, like, we just changed this because we don't want to trigger modern audiences. Like um, Spielberg's change to E.T., where he oh, put yeah. walkie-talkies in the hands of the FBI instead of guns. That was back when E.T. was made back when kind of like the FBI were kind of heroes. Right. They were just they were heroes, but in ET they were misguided. Right? They were misguided because they they just wanted the alien. They wanted to secure the alien. They were misguided FBI. And they they just so Spielberg changed it. I'm really this stuff is really upsetting to me. The fact that they're changing books, they're changing, you know, they're adding trigger warnings to movies. No when did uh, when did we become so weak? I, yeah, exactly. It's like, why why can't we let our kids uh, toughen up a little bit and, and be offended? Yeah, be offended. That's my message. Yeah. Be offended. You'll get yeah, over. We'll make it. you a better person. It will make you a better person. It will make you a stronger person. Uh, you you don't. The last thing you want to do is constantly be protecting your little children because then they grow up to be children. NYC indie filmmaker Sujua Ekanayake for five says new york city is great looking forward to checking out la soon looking forward to checking out 65 movie all humans are closely related race equals fiction now that i agree this whole thing there is who is it a scientist who said there is one race it's the human race mm -hmm. i i 100 percent agree with it. i'm so tired of that we want to divide ourselves into groups no who cares yeah, so let them couple off. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying I agree with that statement. No, I am saying I agree with that statement. I'm saying, you know, that the I'm idea saying, of interracial couples, that's the whole point of interracial couples. No, no, no. All I'm it. saying is it's just like a thing that happens in movies so often, it's mm -hmm. become a cliche like anything that happens in movies too often. Mm -hmm. Whereas the opposite of that becomes a surprise, like, oh, I didn't see that coming. But yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I'm so tired of like uh, the division, the things that are seeking to divide our country mm -hmm. and divide people by so many different things. John Thomas says he answered in the chat. Where? Can you find it? Yeah. Just uh, say it again. We got to find it. Who is it? Alan Horkins. And thank you for that. Um I agree with that statement. I'm just, we're, you know, I would go so far. We're all human. We're Americans. We're, we are earth citizens, citizens of earth. Can we stop trying to divide ourselves in, you know, it's just, ugh. yeah. Repost that, um, that Alan, episode title. Alan Horkin says copyright law is broken. Originals should be preserved. There needs to be a group of artists powerful artists across mediums film television literature who get together and lobby for a law to not alter original movies original movies and literature must be preserved this this changing of it is stupid people people need to step up Alan Horkin says, uh, no race. What about this people who are one eighth Neanderthal? By the way, I did the 23 in me. I'm part Neanderthal. Uh, I have a little Neanderthal in me. Juxtapose says, white people are diverse also. Not sure why only certain people are diverse. I know it is really annoying when you say, you know, white people. It's just like, well, what? Are you talking about Italian? You talking about... Uh, yeah. uh, Jewish? You're talking about English, Irish, German? What kind of white people are we talking about here? Yeah. Well, that's why a lot of people say it's not about skin color. It's about culture. 
you know, I think you should, I would much rather see TV and film celebrate culture than, than skin color. Yeah. Well, ginger side is erasing white diversity says Zavin. Yeah. It's so funny because every time you see that there's a character that's a redhead, somebody did a chart of the number of times redheads have been swapped out. And it's, it's, it's always the same. It's always yeah. the same thing. And Solomon Thornton, I grew up in an interracial family, so I'm used to it. But like I always say, story comes first, then diversity. Sydney mm -hmm. Poitier says, society sees me as a colored man. See me as a man. I agree with you. I also, uh, I have a, I have a stepbrother and a stepsister who are not white. Okay. So yeah. Um, so there you go. Ginger side people are saying in the chat. Yeah. Um, well, there we go. I think we've, I didn't expect 65 to divert into so many <laughs> other topics. But maybe we should maybe we should pivot to a different topic here. Okay, we're gonna do that. How are you doing, Alan? How is how is the while I get set up here? How was the uh, how was the trip? How was your aisle seat? Yeah, the aisle seat was great. Uh, the guy next to me was watching Bros. <laughs> Your kid, wait, that was the movie on the flights. Well, you know, you can on flights now. You could log into the airplane's Wi-Fi and and you can watch a bunch of movies. And he chose to watch Bros. Uh, I I actually chose to watch a a South by screening, uh, so I didn't have to see it tomorrow. So, but, so uh, what South by movie did you watch on the plane? I'm sure the filmmaker loves that you watch their movie on a plane. <laughs> I know it's called Sister and Sister. Uh, it's a coming of age story of uh, two teen girls. Um, so, but it, it's very much a drama. I, I don't think uh, our audience here would find it interesting. But it was, it wasn't that bad. You know, it's about it's about kids. It's it sounds it sounds great. It sounds like a festival movie. It is a festival movie, <laughs> absolutely. It's like one of those movies you look. It's like oh, this is uh, a festival movie, and that's. Yeah that yeah you know it's like after sun basically you know it's it's you know a little family drama gotcha gotcha all right uh let's see oh comments we'll get to your comments we're gonna get to your comments because we're switching but, but before okay let me get to this because it's off topic um nicholas varga Vargo for four ninety nine. Spielberg reneged on the changes he made to ET. He regretted them, and the movie is once again the movie we know and loved in nineteen eighty two. What's so funny is I think I have both versions of the movie. But yeah, oh, no, I know I do. Yeah. That was the time where George Lucas and a whole bunch of people were making changes to movies, unnecessary. Like Star Wars. Well. I, some of the changes I don't mind. They were fixing mat lines and mm -hmm. little things that like. Yeah, cleaning were, up prints. and Cleaning up like, you know, bad. Pr if a print was bad, you could see this sort of like little square that followed. You know, you had to like time, the, do the light timing just good mm -hmm. enough so that it would not, you know, so, so that you didn't see them. Chris, is that you? Did you? This is the fun part where I don't know if it's me who went away or I think I think that's Chris going. So hey, um, yeah. So I think what Chris was saying, uh, you know, I remember when before the special editions of Star Wars came out, uh, Lucas actually did do a cleanup of all the prints. Uh, oh, Chris lost power, so I'm going to keep going. Yeah, um, and so you know, remember it was. Star Wars back then, especially uh, like the asteroid scene in Empire Strikes Back. Um, yeah, it's all everyone's everyone's cheering me on. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, no, but you would have like a hundred uh, individual elements on it on the screen, and uh, you know, and they were was compositing. I think that's what they were talking about. And, uh, and so Lucas went in, and the first pass he did was he basically took all the film print. Uh, and digitally cleaned it up, and uh, and then he brought in uh, all his special edition stuff, uh, such as turning Jabba the Hutt from a man into a hut. 
And so uh, that is that. Um, yeah, I did not see screen six, screen six. But I will tell you, I um, just for a little bit of history here, uh, when Scream 5 came out, it was a year ago. And the reason why I remember that is because that's when Chris and I started doing uh, these live streams. And we were still working out the schedule of um, of when we would actually do the live stream, what day, what time. And I remember Scream 5 had come out, and um, and for some reason I couldn't get – I couldn't do a stream one morning, and we did uh, – we did – Chris basically did the – a Scream 5 review on his own. And, um, and I remember I wanted to be on that one because I had a lot to say about Scream 5. Um, so, yeah, let me, I'll talk to you. The, the, the problem, this is one thing no one's talked about, at least the film threat uh, regarding Scream 5. But um, I did not like Scream 5. Uh, and I, I felt like it kind of veered off of its original mission where it was kind of taking tropes of horror films and kind of turning it on its head. And this one did uh, a trope, a modern trope, and it did nothing other than to honor the trope and to embrace the trope and to not even acknowledge it. And and I will tell you this, when you watch Scream 5, ask yourself who dies. And uh, you will find that the people who died in Scream 5 were all the white people, uh, all the white men, I should say, uh, you know, even David Arquette, sorry, spoiler. Um, and and the only white female to die um, is was was the cop was the the white cop. Okay, so Chris wants me to send him a link. Let me see if I just bear with me for one second here. Uh, let's see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to do this so I'm not completely off screen, uh, here we go. Sorry, I'm just sending Chris the link. Okay, there we go. So Chris should be back with us shortly. Let me reset my thing here. And so what I felt like was Scream 5 should have been all about wokeness, about recognizing wokeness, about the idea that, that this is the white characters who are gonna die. It should have really embraced that. I think I'm back, um, and uh, and that that's to me that was the biggest disappointment because it had an opportunity to say something about um, about race, about wokeness, and it didn't do it. In fact, uh, you know, it, it sort of it sort of praised itself for the fact that it only killed the white people in, in the movie. Um, that said, uh, Chris has seen Scream Six. Uh, I know Eric Weber saw it. If you saw his stream on Midnight Movie Talk, he hated Scream 6. He, he thought it was, um, he thought it was uh, the worst movie ever made, uh, especially this year. Uh, and I think, what was the other movie he hated? Um, but, but it seemed like that this one was better than that. Um, let's see if, Alan, let's see, did they kill the one gay Asian? I don't know, did they? Um, Scream 6, let's see, Special Agent Bill Maxwell, Scream 6 looks like John Wick, Hunting down teens. Uh, let's see. Does Scream Six have Asian representation? I haven't seen it, so we'll find out soon. Um, I like. I Dog says I like five and six, but they both have major issues. I still don't think they're completely awful Scream movies. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, blucka blucka. <laughs> Scream 6 became the Fast and Furious of the Scream franchise. Let me check one more time, see if uh, Chris, is, Chris got my link. Should work. That should have worked. Uh, okay. Whoops. It's because I'm on the iPad. Whoops. Okay. In my back. All right. Let's go back here. Uh, yeah, who is the director? Not sure. I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up questions that uh, I don't know the answers to. Um, yeah, Want Biscuit had the biggest crush on Nev Campbell. Neve Campbell. Uh, let me see. 
Womp Biscuit. In my opinion, Lucas's biggest insult was replacing Sebastian Shaw in the later re releases with Hayden Christensen. Nothing against Lucas, but uh, just totally erased Shaw just wrong. So you, I, I think you're talking about um, Return of the Jedi when uh, the special editions, they replaced uh, Sebastian Shaw, who played older Anakin, with Hayden Christensen. Um, yeah, you know, but at least that was the filmmaker choice. Let's see. Uh, JTPRX, Alan killed the white man's internet. That's right, white people. Uh, imperfect, iPad streaming, I feel your pain. I feel like now I'm just stalling until Chris is coming back. Um, let's see, Wamp Biscuit, Alan Hork, uh, oh, this is from an Alan Horkin comment. Uh, yeah, so let's let's start. Uh, Want biscuit? Also illogical. If Anakin was a young ghost, then Kenobi should have played a young ghost. I thought it was based on when they died, or when they disappeared. Uh, let's see. To me, the big crime is putting Jabba in Star Wars two movies too soon. Marsha Lucas won uh, won an Oscar for her edit, and George defaced it. Yeah. Um, that, that's what happens when you have filmmakers who uh, they lock in a cut and, you know, it's that, it's that filmmaker uh, conundrum where, um, was it where, uh, where you're never, you're never truly satisfied. Uh, at some point you do have to just stop and say, this is a script, this is a story uh, and, and move on with it. All right. Hey man. Hey. <laughs> uh <laughs> Hey, uh, you got the link, right? something is wrong with my computer. It literally just stopped. Oh, I need geez. a I need a meta PC. Wait, can we get a film threat uh, edition? Yeah, something like that. Uh, the Nerdrotic one looks pretty cool. Yeah, the Geeks and Gamers one. I have no idea what's wrong with my computer. It just now stopped. And. I don't did know you kick? Wrong. Did you kick the uh, the power strip or? No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. It just went black. So, there you go. Um, very bizarre. Very bizarre. So I'm a little caught off guard. Okay. But well, I talked about um, Scream Five. Why I dislike Scream Five, and I don't know if you remember, but when Scream Five came out, that's when we were just starting to do the live stream. Yeah, I did not of... like Scream Five either. Yeah, but, but my biggest thing was was the fact that they killed only the white people, and <laughs> uh, and they never they could have used that as a part of the storyline. That yeah, that they, never... they could have made it funny. Yeah, that all the POCs were safe. Uh, it was the white people who were going to get it, and and interestingly enough, the only white woman to die was the cop. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So. Uh... So tell us about Scream 6. All right. Thank you, Alan. Um, Scream 6. See, I need my computer here because I'm not, I would have like IMDb up so I would know all the character names and whatnot. And and I don't have that. Okay. Here, I'll pull it up. Um... Yeah. But uh, I just I'll just give you my general impressions of Scream 6. Uh, I, I, compared to Scream 5, I did not like Scream 5. I think you and I both didn't like Scream 5. Mm -hmm. But compared to that, Scream 6 is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's What I like about it is there's this big rant in the middle of Scream 6 where one of the characters goes off and says, this isn't a reboot. This isn't a sequel. This isn't a requel. This is a franchise. And then goes off on like why like movie franchises like where they go off the rails and where movie franchises start to suck you know what i mean so i thought that was like super clever in addition i'll say this is definitely gorier than the previous scream five this is like i mean so many kills are like somebody getting stabbed like through the mouth into the brain or through the eye into the <laughs> brain it's like like the kills and, and the one thing is they actually mentioned this, like, because if you're going to do a franchise, everything's got to be bigger, more kills, more, more, you know, guts, more whatever. 
And they even mentioned in this franchise rant, Luke Skywalker, like your legacy characters have to be a big part of it. And so, so that's all contained in this. Um, so I, look, I, I also think that Jenna Ortega and the actress who plays her sister are, are excellent. I thought they were very good. Mm -hmm. Also, I thought that the humor was appropriate in this. And they brought back uh, legacy characters like Courtney Cox, you know? I thought she was really she was really great in it. Wasn't uh, it the only legacy character? Not the only. There's Hayden, uh, what's her name? Hayden Penitary. Oh, that's right. that's right. She's in it as well. I thought she was, I thought she was fine. I thought she was fine. She comes back and she's now an FBI agent, right? And of course, the one thing I'll I'll say about this movie, like I really it had me. I mean, there were like there's like unexpected stuff that happens in the beginning, which I think is always really clever in in a, a scream film super and we're not we're not talking any spoilers we'll do another review and we'll do a proper review next week where we talk spoilers because i'll say this someone in the chat mentioned that that um the the ending was stupid all the scream endings are stupid they're all like so this is your motivation for doing all these horrible murders of people like uh, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was weird. So, so yeah, we'll talk about it next week. We'll talk about the ending next week. That to me is the only thing that really stood out and bugged me because look, this is a scream movie. My expectations are incredibly low, like all out of the gate. My expectations are like, eh, it's a scream movie. You know, it's like not, especially because five was such a disappointment, but this one, the humor is there. Uh, the characters, you know, I thought were very likable. Now we're seeing a bunch of the characters from the last movie in this. So we've kind of built more of a relationship with them. And uh, the gore was great. And there, there were moments of real tension. There were moments of real tension. You're like, well, who are they going to kill? And one of the things they talk about, like legacy characters aren't safe in a franchise. In a franchise, a legacy character isn't safe. You can lose legacy characters. So, like, nobody was safe. I mean, they were killing... Uh, again, we're not talking spoilers, but they were killing characters I didn't expect them to kill. So... Yeah, and yeah. I also mentioned uh, Eric Weber. He's He called it the worst movie. Uh, He's wrong. Time. He is wrong. Dead wrong. I will say, Eric Weber, by the way, who liked Ant-Man 3... <laughs> yeah uh, yeah um yeah i you know uh it was um look I, it, the movie lives up to being a fun screen movie if you look up maybe you can share screen with rotten tomatoes right now okay and i'll say i'll tell you this um leo Cor uh leo uh, cody did this graphic of my face that is how I feel right now. I'm so pissed off. <laughs> this is the second time my computer's like, I think, I think my computer's trying to tell me something. So yeah. it, it's telling you, it wants you to put it out of its misery. Oh my God. Yeah. This is perfect timing for me to have to get a new computer. That's great. Awesome. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, it's, I, if, if I remember correctly, last night I checked, Scream 6 is already 90% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it was like 75% for for uh, yeah. critic score. Compare that with, I believe, if I recall correctly, 65 was 25% critic score, 60% audience score for 65. Okay, I'm about to pull it up here. Okay, cool, cool. See, let me know if it's, uh, hopefully I can see it here. See if it's Okay, changed. let me know. Uh, Almost, almost. And I just want to apologize to everyone in the chat. Um, this doesn't, hasn't happened often. I mean, Alan and I have both struggled with bad internet. I guess maybe it's because we live in California. Are we cursed? <laughs> probably. Yeah. They probably sent a power surge into your computer and blew it up. Yeah. So Scream, uh, Scream Sex currently 78% uh, from critics and 93% with audience. 93% audience. What does that tell you? The yeah. audience is having a good time. Compare that with Scream 5. Look up Scream 5 now. Okay. Shoot. 
I don't know what's going on with the. Uh, with <laughs> Compare it with Scream Five, ninety three percent audience score. I mean, look, the audiences. If you see this with a packed audience, you are going to have a great time. I, I don't know, know why. Yeah, sorry. Keep going. So, did you find Scream Five? No, because it, it's. I, I put in Scream Five. I put in Scream V, and it's not coming up. Every all the other screams are coming up. Just Google it. Yeah. Just Google okay, it. Okay, let me let me pull it off screen so you're not watching me struggle with this. Whoops. All right. Yeah, it's weird. My computer is on. Like I can hear it like whirring and I can hear the fan, but um, I the screen is just there's no screen. Son of a gun. Is it a control alt delete situation? I don't know. Is it are you on a Mac or are you on a Mac? And it's a it's a uh... MacBook Pro. This is I'm I'm looking oh, to the chat for customer support. Dear God. Uh I can't even look up Scream Five. It's like it wants to bring be... me this. It, it wants to bring me to the original Scream. It, it keeps pulling up. The, oh, damn it. That's why. Because Scream 5 is called Scream. <laughs> oh, Scream 5 is called Scream because huh. it was a real. Yeah. Okay, that's why I'm not seeing it. Okay. And? And well, let me get it up here. We're doing some riveting live streaming right now. Okay, here we go. Um, actually, Scream 5, uh, it is certified fresh at 76%. And uh, 82% audience score. All right. So it was, you know, uh, but this one is much better. This one is much better. For sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm befuddled by the Scream score, the Scream 5. Uh, you know, it, it just, to me, it just felt like it fell off the, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. I'm kind of interested to hear what that rant was about the franchise in the movie and uh, and how ironic it was or how, you know, were they just saying it to say it or was this kind of an integral part of the story of how it played out? I'm not sure. Hey, Alan, um, let's do this. We're okay. going to do a bonus bigger live stream. First of all, we're doing our Oscars watch party on Sunday, come hell or high water. We're going to be doing a bigger show on Wednesday where we'll do a proper review of Scream 6 with spoilers, by the way. So you'll have a chance to... The, the studio actually requested that no spoiler reviews until Monday because they wanted people to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So... We'll talk. We'll, we'll, so next Wednesday, we'll do a bonus longer live stream. I promise to make up for today. I think we're going to end the stream early today because of my computer problems. And you're in Austin, Texas. It probably would help you to get an earlier start because you've got to go to the convention center. Yeah, I got to get, get my badge. badge. Yeah. You got to get your badge. So uh, I just want to apologize to everyone in the chat today. I am so sorry. Uh, this. I will get this fixed. I, uh, I, I will get back to our normal schedule and we will make it up to you with a longer stream talking about Scream 6. We will do that. Um, and that's it. Join us on Sunday, March 12th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Alan and I will be having our Oscars watch party. Members will have an opportunity to win a bunch of stuff. And we're also going to be... Uh, uh, having some amazing special guests, Gary from Nerdrotic. We've got uh, Paulie from Latino Slant. Uh, Chato, Paul yeah. Chato will be joining us. Script Doctor. Eric Weber is going to be there, which means there's a 25% chance he's going to be there. <laughs> so, so there I think you, you had Az on the list as well. Yeah, Az is coming. Uh, I talked to him. I was on him with uh, Critical Drinker. Uh, yesterday. So my apologies for the computer problems. I'm going to get this stuff fixed. We will see you on Sunday. We'll do a bonus longer live stream on Wednesday. We'll talk South by Southwest movies, Scream 6, Picard, among other things. Um, 
Alan, uh, take us out, man. And I just want to say, I'm just, I'm so sorry. I feel, I feel like I don't like to disappoint people. I, I make a promise. I, I keep my promise. I keep my word. But I'm probably headed to the Apple store in Pasadena right now. So hopefully I can get an appointment. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, hey, with that. Yeah. So uh, with that, let's get out of here. Take care, man.